Hey guys, Jason Lanier here. This is gonna be a video where I tell you which Sony full frame mirrorless is the best for you and why. Now you may be saying to yourself, Jason, this is April, 2019. This video is too late. Let me tell you why I didn't do this video earlier. It's very simple. There was a big price disparity between the three cameras, the A7R3, the A9, and the A7 III. And due to recent firmware updates, the cameras have closed the gap a little bit. Now we have an interesting scenario where we have the three full frame bodies that are very similar in price and similar in features. I've owned and shot all three of these cameras for over a year extensively. And so I'm gonna show you pictures. I'm gonna give you examples for which scenario and which one I would take if I only had one that I could use. So the Sony A9 just dropped a thousand bucks in price. I mean a thousand bucks. That's what prompted me to make this video. People have been asking me since the price drop, Jason, should I get the A7 III or the A9? And then you kind of throw the R3 in there because R3 is in between the two in price. So let's get to it. They're gonna give you the same video performance no matter which camera you choose. Now the A9 will probably give you a little bit better because of its autofocus capabilities. But other than that, from a video output standpoint, I use all three. This is the R3. This is the A9. You see a strap on it. It isn't my camera. It's a loner. And I'm gonna tell you why a little bit later in the video. And I'm being filmed on the 7.3. All of them are going to do very, very well with video. I use all of them for 4K video output and all of them look great. They all have five axis image stabilization and they all are full frame. So first let's talk about the purposes of these cameras, what you would use them for. A7 III is a great wedding photography camera. It's a great camera for general lifestyle photography. It's a great camera for portraits. You know, I built my career off of 12 megapixel cameras, so 24 megapixels is something that I've always said is the sweet spot for uh, current DSLR mirrorless cameras. Where does the A9 go further than the A7 III? It's much better for action. It's much better for wildlife, sports, uh, things of that nature, and for creating almost a movie-like effect. Wait till I get, show you guys some shots with the, the 20 frames per second with the A9. It's pretty mind-blowing. A7R3 is gonna be for landscapes, architecture, high-end resolution portraiture, commercial work. A7R3 is gonna be fantastic for that. Those are the three purposes of the cameras, and now I'm gonna tell you how each one of them are different in these given categories. Uh, both of the uh, A7R3 and the A7 III will go up to 10 frames per second with a mechanical shutter. Now that's important if you are a strobist who does a lot of fast action flash. The A9 only does five frames per second as a mechanical shutter. However, keep this in mind, my friends. Most of us, we will never use more than five frames per second with the flash. Now where the shutter on the A9 really trumps them is with the electronic shutter. The electronic shutter is fantastic because it allows you to go up to 132 thousandths of a second compared to 18 thousandths of a second with the other two cameras. Now you may say, well, that doesn't sound like it's a big deal. I mean, yeah, super fast. I'm never gonna shoot that fast. It's not about shooting fast. It's about your ability to lower your exposure. See, if you wanna shoot wide open outdoors and you're doing something like a natural light shoot and you wanna to go to 132 thousandths of a second, what that enables you to do is it enables you to use the A9 with that faster shutter almost as a neutral density filter. It really does, it's really cool. I've done a lot of shoots where it's super bright outside and I can shoot up to 132 thousandths of a second, which enables me to widen my aperture. So if you wanna get more of a, almost a high speed sync look effect with natural light, you're gonna get that with the A9. Here's some footage that I shot at an NFL game with uh, uh, Gene Lauer, Sony Artisan, great guy. Look at this footage. For, here's one of a cheerleader doing her dance and everything else. And these are consecutive frames and check this out. It's just so cool to see how, how well it catches focus. Here's another, here's another example where uh, you're watching the NFL receiver catch the ball and do a backflip into the end zone. Very, very, very cool stuff. Here's some other ones with, I, I, that I've done with models. Posing, flowing. If there's anything that you're doing with natural light in motion, you are going to absolutely love the A9. 
this is pre-firmware update and now the a9 is even better with its autofocus so it just gives you an idea as to how awesome this camera is so the best in class for shutter a9 now let's talk about the buffer the a7 III does 89 raw the a7r III does 76 raw and the a9 does something insane like 241 raw I'm telling you, if you do anything fast action in the world, you are going to want the A9. I was in South Africa and uh, I was in Kruger National Park shooting wildlife. And there was a leopard up in a tree and he was eating a porcupine. And it was really enthralling to watch this because I was parked right underneath him. And there was a hyena right beneath him. It was just an incredible moment. But I had my 7.3 and I was firing the uh, 7.3 because I just had the the 100 to 400 lens on it, and I had the A9 with another lens, and lucky to have both cameras so I can use them interchangeably. And as I was shooting with the 7.3, it kept hitting the buffer. And the other thing that I noticed that I couldn't stand was the blackout. The A9 has no blackout on it. Blackout here, well, that's no big deal. Whatever, I'm not gonna hit the blackout. I never appreciated it until I was in South Africa. I tried the 7.3 and it kept hitting the blackout and I couldn't see what I was getting pictures of. And when you're firing fast 10 frames per second and you can't see what you're getting pictures of and you could potentially be losing focus, that's a problem. Now from a practical shooting standpoint, I don't think I've really ever hit the buffer on the A9. The A7R3 is a different issue though. I do hit the buffer on that. I was doing a shoot with Emily at a range studio and I hit the buffer on the A7R3 when I was really hitting on it and it was frustrating. I love the A7R3, it's a phenomenal camera, but I did hit that buffer. So if you are doing anything that's a fast action, fast moving environment, the A9 is gonna be your best bet. 7.3 is next and then R3 is third. So best in class on this one, A9. ISO performance. Of the three cameras, the, the, the camera that gets the best ISO performance is the A7 III. Both the A7 III and the A9 go up to 52,000 native ISO, and the A7R III goes up to 32,000. Due to the fact that it's a higher resolution camera, the R3 is going to give you uh, more problems when you shoot later at night. If you're in an environment where really gonna start to raise your ISO, and like at a reception hall at a wedding, something of that nature, the A7 III is going to be your best bet. The A9 is not gonna be far behind. It really won't, guys. So uh, I wouldn't let that dissuade you from getting an uh, A9 over an A7 III. So best in class for ISO, A7 III. Now each one of these cameras has different autofocus points. On the A7 III, there's 693 phase and 425 contrast. On the A7R3, there's 399 phase, 425 contrast. And on the A9, there's 693 phase and 25 contrast. Now, from a practical standpoint, which camera focuses best? The A9 slaughters any camera I've ever shot, ever. If you struggle with autofocus, there's no better camera on the market to touch than the Sony A9, hands down. As many of you know recently, I've been playing around with the Canon systems, the Nikon systems, the Olympus systems. They don't touch what an A9 can do. Nobody touches Sony's focus, and the A9 is a whole new level of focus compared to the other cameras. Now, trust me, if you're, if you're an A7 III user or an R3 user, you're going to say, damn, the, the autofocus on my camera is fantastic. I'm not going to argue with you. It is fantastic. I'm just saying the A9 is a lot better. Now, with the firmware updates that the Sonys are receiving, um, they're getting real-time autofocus, uh, which means you don't have to depress a button, which is awesome. That's something I've been asking Sony to do for years. And that's something I think they got nudged by Canon. Again, another reason why I think competition's fantastic. The A9 has lock-on autofocus, which is fantastic. Now, the A7R3 and the A7 III have pet animal eye autofocus, which is ridiculous. Now, that being said, that's coming to the A9 in, in summertime. The A9 is the Muhammad Ali of autofocus in the photography world, hands down. To me, the A9 is the most underrated camera on the market. Hands down, the A9 wins autofocus best in class. Resolution. Well, that's easy. The A9 and the A7 III are 24. The A7R III is 42. Do you need all that resolution? That's only a question you can answer. I don't think most people do. Most of us do not print huge stuff anymore. Most of us use images for websites, Facebook. If you are serious into cropping into your shots in post, you need to get an A7R3. If you aren't sure of your compositions and you really, really need to crop, crop, crop in, 
you get an a7R3. The resolution on the a7R3 is beautiful, and for it being such a high resolution camera and still being relatively fast, it's a phenomenal kit. So from a resolution standpoint, R3, it, it beats them. There's no two ways around it. It's best in class for that. I have the newest MacBook Pro. I notice a significant difference when I'm editing R3 files versus A9 or A7 III files. Unless you have like supercomputers, getting into higher resolution cameras isn't always the best bet for everyone out there. Just keep that in mind, my friends. I'm not saying that you shouldn't get high megapixel cameras. Heaven knows they're a lot of fun. If you're just an artist and you're playing around and you just take shots, R3 is probably gonna be awesome. If you actually do any type of volume shooting, if you do any sort of high output shooting, weddings, events. I used to do sporting events for a company called Ragnar Relay. I was their photographer just 10 years ago. Using an R3 for that would be a nightmare. The sports teams would run in after the end of the run. I'm shooting hundreds of sports teams. The last thing I wanna do is pull in 42 megapixel files. I just don't need that. So just keep that in mind. Ask yourself, what is the end result? What is the output of this image that I'm taking? And if you do that, I think most of you will find you don't need 42 megapixels. For those that do, hey man, R3 is a fantastic camera. From an ergonomic standpoint, this is the R3, this is the A9. They pretty much feel the same in the hand. They both, all three cameras, the A7 III that's, that's recording me, they all pretty much have the same grip, dual card slots, they're pretty much the same, guys, except for the dials. The dials on the A9, are a godsend if you actually want to get them work more efficiently. This guy right here gives you the ability to change your, your drive modes, your autofocus modes much faster than going into the system. There's PC sync ports on this thing. There's ethernet cable on this thing. This thing was meant to work. This is a freaking beast. If you're looking for a feature rich camera in the Sony line, you're not going to find one better than the A9. Best in class, A9. So I'm sure you guys can see where this is going. If I only had one camera to take around, it would without a doubt be the Sony A9. I even did a resolution test between the, the A9 and the R2 when the A9 first came out. And I posted that video and I'll post a link to it here. I didn't notice much of a difference, if you want to be honest. I was at Crater Lake up in Oregon. Again, I love my R3 and I do shoot it all the time, but I have the luxury of shooting all three cameras and most people don't. I don't say that to brag, I say that to help you. I think for the value proposition of it, and what prompted me to make this video was the thousand dollar price drop in the A9. I am just stunned that they dropped a thousand bucks. I thought maybe they dropped it 500, thousand dollars. Guys, this camera is remarkable for $3,500. In fact, the reason why this has a strap on it, this is a loaner from Lens Rentals. Why is it a loaner? Because I was filming a video about two weeks ago with my sons. Uh, bless his heart, one of my guys uh, forgot to hold the camera when he unscrewed the quick quick release plate and my a9 took a dive on the top of the camera smash right here onto concrete from about six feet now the really cool part the camera still works still works perfectly fine it just had physical damage from where it fell Sony reached out to me and said hey we saw your post let us fix it for you awesome thank you guys yes we are still family if you have 2000 bucks and you're thinking about getting an A7 III, if there's any chance you can hold out and save another $1,500 and get the A9, I'm promising you, you won't regret it. I'm promising you, you will not regret it. If you're in a scenario where it's gonna take you a very long time to earn that extra $1,500, I would get the A7 III. I would always pick up the A9 over the A7 III, just simply because in fact I, I do have both, so the A7 III does a lot of recording for me. Um, I would pick up the a7R3 if I'm going to do high-end resolution portraiture, uh, landscape stuff of that. But other than that, I'm going to keep it to my A9. I love this beast. I really do. And I think for the money, photographers out there cannot find a better value proposition than the Sony A9. There are, there are links below if you guys want to order any of this gear. Let me know what questions you have. Uh, and let me know what cameras you want me to test, guys. We're doing some fun stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share information down the road in just a little bit as to why I'm shooting all these different camera brands and everything else, but I wanted to show some love to the Sony people out there. I haven't forgotten you. I love Sony. I'm still a Sony shooter, and um, there's great times ahead. Great, great, great times ahead. So thank you for watching. Until next time, keep shooting, 
Never give up on your dreams. Find a right gear that works for you. And remember, you only have one chance to get it right. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Oh, hey, you guys still there? Hello? Talking to you. Really, you're still there? That's awesome, guys, thanks. If you wanna continue this learning online, go to patreon.com slash Photography, and you can learn alongside me. You can watch my screens, you can edit with me, do all of it from anywhere in the world on any computer, guys. It's the best way to learn if you can't make it to a workshop. If you're crazy and you want to see me in person and you're ready for it, then go to www.jasonlinear.com slash register. You can find a workshop near you and we will have an absolute blast together. It's about inspiration. It's about photography. It's about life and it's about finding the passion in all of them. So again, guys, if you want to learn online, if you can't make it to a, something in person, patreon.com slash jasonlinear photography. And if you want to learn in person, jasonlinear.com slash register now the last time i did this let me see i'll just do it with my finger this time <laughs> i love doing that it just pisses off the pros i'll talk to you guys later peace